how to tell if you have a deep vein thrombosis or a blood clot. These are very serious problems. And as podiatrists, this is probably the most serious thing that I see. And there's two types of blood clots. So there's ones that go down to your toes. That's called your arteries. And these are less blood clots, but more narrowing of the blood vessels. This is cholesterol in the smooth muscle and it shrinks down the blood vessel. And over time, you can feel more tired, more fatigue, weaker muscles. People think this is old age, but it's not necessarily just old age. And on the other hand, on the way back up to the heart, you have your veins. Veins return blood flow to your heart. This is where an actual clot can plug up the vessel, and this is called the deep vein thrombosis, and this is what we're gonna focus on today. The disclaimer is these videos can always contain inaccuracies, even though we do our best. So if you have a concern of a blood clot, always see your doctor. Don't mess around and try and self-diagnose with a video because this clot can break free in your vein and shoot up to your heart and lungs and plug them and cause serious problems, even death. And also blood vessels or arteries in this case can build up fat in the smooth muscle and this could plug the blood flow causing gangrene down to your toes. So these are serious. Don't rely on this guy right here, only go get checked out. The true danger of a blood clot is when it breaks free, you can see it traveling here, it shoots up your major blood vessels and can lodge in your heart or in your lungs. When this happens, it's called a pulmonary embolism. This is the real danger. A blood clot itself is not a huge danger, but what it can do is plug your lungs, cause you to lose breath and even die. So this is different than a blockage in your artery. You can see this is plaque buildup that might need opening and a stent. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, but this can cause tired and weak legs. And this could be something dangerous as well. A deep vein thrombosis usually occurs people who travel, who sit in cars for eight hours at a time or fly coast to coast across the country. When you're sitting in a plane, you're not moving for like six to eight hours at a time, maybe even four hours could do it. And there's other risk factors associated with this that can cause it. So being overweight, having diabetes, being a smoker, having a prior injury, even like a sprained ankle, pulled Achilles tendon, a prior toe surgery, ankle surgery, it's very high risk. An Achilles tendon surgery is the highest risk. It's like 25% chance, I think, I've seen in some articles, although that seems a little bit high to me. But I'm gonna go over how to diagnose this, but first I could use a favor from you. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. So the way you diagnose a deep vein thrombosis, here's what makes you think about it is, one leg compared to the other is red hot and swollen. It's usually not both legs. If it's both legs that are swollen, you probably have a sore muscle or some type of systemic problem. Theoretically, you could have a blood clot in each calf muscle, but it's highly, highly unlikely. It wouldn't be the first thought. But if it's a lot of pain in your calf, you still want to see your podiatrist and get a Doppler to perform uh, an examination to rule it out because there's no way to be 100%. You also have red discolored skin. There's something called the Homan's test. So if you squeeze the calf muscle, the Homan's test will say, hey, that might be 90% chance of having a blood clot in the calf, but it could be a sore muscle, could be a pulled Achilles tendon, it could be a tennis calf injury. So be safe, go see your podiatrist. If a clot is suspected, a venous duplex Doppler may be necessary to check where the blockage is. And these are performed in the emergency room. So if a patient comes in here with this type of problem, right away, we don't even mess around, go get checked out. If you think you're worried, we consider these very serious problems because there are a lot of blood vessels in the legs and sometimes the symptoms are clear, sometimes they're not that clear. And you can see there's a lot of arteries, a lot of veins in the legs, the calf muscles, especially now with medications. Uh, people are beginning to realize how serious some of these risks are and how much you don't wanna mess around if you're concerned. So here are official risk factors of a deep vein thrombosis, age. So over 60 years old is a risk factor. So ding on that. 
Number two is having an injury. So if you sprained your ankle, if you pulled your Achilles tendon, if you had surgery, if you broke a bone, the more severe the injury, the higher the risk of a blood clot. So a lot of times after surgery, we'll put somebody on a blood thinner as a precaution. Bed rest can do this for you. If you're laying in bed quite a bit or sitting on the couch and not moving, that's a higher risk factor. The single biggest risk factor is, and this is kind of common sense, if you had a prior blood clot, that's the single highest risk factor. So you always have to be aware. But number two is, does your family have a history of blood clots? Sometimes there's blood diseases that can make you have a higher risk of blood clots. If that's the case, maybe talk with your cardiologist or doctor about getting on a blood thinner. A lot of medications, especially a common one is birth control or hormone supplements, that can do it for sure. So talk about that with your doctor as well. Another one is pregnancy. With pregnancy, there's a high risk of uh, getting a blood clot for sure. Smoking is a big one. This is kind of common sense at this point, but if you're a smoker, stop smoking. It's associated with pretty much every bad health complication there is out there. Cancer can do it too. So if you're getting blood clots, cancer could do it. Heart issues could do it. When I think about the heart, it has to work hard and everybody has a heart with strong muscles. But when you become very large since you were a little kid, the heart necessarily doesn't grow proportionately. So it has to work harder and harder and harder and it needs more muscles. That's when heart attacks can happen. That's when blood vessels can narrow. And the problem is not only is your body a lot bigger, so it has to supply more blood flow, but the blood vessels get narrowed. So this is where a cardiologist or a vascular specialist, like a vascular surgeon can come in. They could open up those blood vessels to help the heart a little bit, get the blood flow down better. So you want a strong heart and you want smooth open vessels by a specialist. These are the stages of arterial sclerosis. You can see on the left hand side how fat and cholesterol can build up in the smooth muscles. And on the right hand side, a vascular specialist can perform something called an angioplasty with a balloon and stent placement. So the balloon expands it and then that stent keeps it open. But this isn't always as good as it seems either. Autoimmune diseases can do it. Inflammatory bowel disease can do it. As this raises the inflammation in your body, your risk of blood clots go up because your immune system is hyperactive. Genetics is another big one, so a family history. So here's what your podiatrist would do. Number one, go see your podiatrist, get evaluated. What we would do if we had a suspicion, we would send you for a venous Doppler in the emergency room in the hospital. We would set this up. I usually call ahead so the patients can get in and out pretty quickly, and this could help them quite a bit. Number two, what we would do is send you to a cardiologist or a primary care doctor. If it's like a severe clot where you're, where you're like, hey, this is an emergency, you'd go into the hospital for IV thrombolytics to break up that blood clot. But generally you could get put on a medication called a blood thinner. So there's common ones like Lovenox, um, Eliquis, a couple other ones that are go-to now. I personally don't prescribe a lot of them. It would be done by your cardiologist and specialist because they do have a lot of side effects as well. If you've had a lot of clots, you could even get a filter placed underneath your heart called a vena cava filter or a greenfield filter and this could actually catch them like an umbrella. So when the blood clot shoots up and dislodges, it can go up into your heart and this could cause something called a pulmonary embolism. The true danger of a blood clot is when it breaks free, you can see it traveling here, it shoots up your major blood vessels and can lodge in your heart or in your lungs. When this happens, it's called a pulmonary embolism. This is the real danger. Blood clot itself is not a huge danger, but what it can do is plug your lungs, cause you to lose breath and even die. So this is different than a blockage in your artery. You can see this is plaque buildup that might need opening and a stent. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, but this can cause tired and weak legs. And this could be something dangerous as well. This has up to a 50% chance of killing you. So if you have shortness of breath, chest pain, if your arms are weak, if you're dizzy and you had a blood clot in your calf, go to the emergency room immediately. But if you had a green filled filter, it could catch that blood clot so it doesn't shoot up to your heart. But again, is this a first line treatment? I don't think this is a first line treatment. You know, it's another surgery where you're implanting something into your body and that could have problems of its own. I've seen people have to get it removed. I've seen clots developed on top of these green filled filters, you know, talking to patients, which leads to its own problems. So here's what you wanna do, control your risk factor. If you're overweight, drop some weight. If you're a smoker, stop smoking. If you're a diabetic, get as healthy as possible, start working out your muscles, start doing stretches and exercises. Squeeze your calf muscle while you're driving in a car. This is called the Homan's test. If one side compared to the other is really sore, 
red hot. You can feel like a nodule or a bump there that could be a blood clot. At the same time, if you can massage it and it goes away very quickly, it's less likely to be. But what you want to do is, that's always a disclaimer, none of these tests are 100%, you know. But what you want to do is you want to loosen up your muscles and your joints. So using an ice bottle or an ice ball like this, these are for sale online if you want to get it, but I recommend using a bottle. This can massage your calf muscles, your feet. What this can do is mobilize your muscles, make them more flexible. They're less likely to have inflammation and that's less likely to develop blood clots. Sore joints, sore muscles are more likely to get these problems, especially after surgery. I'm a big fan of massage roller sticks, especially when you're traveling. You know, if you're sitting all day, getting up for like 30 seconds at a time, just massage your calf muscles, stand up, walk around. There is a lot of evidence for how effective just 30 seconds to a minute can be to breaking up sitting all day. There's actually a study that I read recently that people who sit for three hours at a time, it's the equivalent of smoking one and a half packs per day in terms of your health. If you're sitting for three or more hours every single day at work and not getting up at least one minute per hour and moving around. So you can massage, you can stretch. I'm a big fan of calf stretches, hamstring stretches. Just always check and make sure you don't have a back injury. If something hurts in your back, don't do these. Getting up in the airplane, or a car simply standing and just like flexing your thighs or your hamstrings a little bit like this for 30 seconds to a minute makes a huge difference. The health benefits are huge, huge. So just even pushing up and down on your feet. I even read a study once that said simply standing will make the blood flow pump through your legs and really improve. You don't have to do the muscles necessarily, but just simply standing and walking around when you're on a plane go to the bathroom even if you don't need to go get that blood flowing just move around walk up and down the aisle once or twice and that's really all you need during trips if you're in cars and planes for long periods of times compression stockings i love compression stockings personally so these are varicose veins when you look at your leg and they're prominent they're blue there's sometimes little lumps after a lot of walking they can be even thicker and more swollen on the left hand side here, you can see the valves don't close all the way. So that's why it gets swollen. There's backflow. And what happens is compression socks can hold those valves closed a little bit. So if you're walking all day, your calves are swollen, your ankles are swollen, that can help. But at the same time, that's usually not the root cause. But there are surgical options available. There's a lot of great vein doctors. But personally, as a podiatrist, we see a lot of people, and I say majority of the time we can prevent stuff like this by working on biomechanical corrections. Don't go crazy getting the super strength ones because they're so hard and uncomfortable to wear that most people don't wear them, in my opinion. Get ones that are like 10 millimeters of mercury on Amazon. That can work really well. And number two, for people who sit on computers. So in the age of COVID right now, a lot of people are working from home. What you wanna do is, I have some great links below, but compression pumps for your calf muscles, for your thighs, they pump every couple seconds so your blood's flowing. I'll tell you, this is the single best thing I've done in the last couple years in terms of just sitting, is wearing these. The pumps are kind of annoying and loud, but they pump the blood flow. And I'll tell you, sitting for a couple hours, you don't have a headache, you don't feel weak, you don't feel like you're gonna throw up. Whereas, I, and even I give this to friends and patients and they feel great wearing these things and they tell me how much of a difference it makes, how much their energy level is better, not just blood flow uh, improvement and not just blood clot prevention, but feeling better overall so you're not just sitting there like a lump, unhealthy and not moving. Eat a great diet. So a lot of times diets can do this for you. The healthier you eat, the more vegetables you eat, the healthier you're gonna be. The less inflammation and the less cholesterol there's gonna be in your blood flow and in your blood vessels. And then move, exercise. What you wanna do is, it's simple exercises. If you look this up online, basically just move your foot up and down every uh, 30 minutes or so. You know, stand up on your toes, work your calf muscle out, just grab your hand and massage your calf muscles if you're on a plane and you can't do it. All this stuff helps. So the compression stockings, massaging, doing little exercises like every 15 or 30 minutes can make a big difference. You'll feel better and go see your podiatrist. If you're in Michigan, come see us. We'd love to take care of your blood flow problems. We work with vascular specialists in our office and we provide great treatment. If that helped at all, 
please give us a thumbs like, give us a comment, tell us if we suck or if we did a great job and give us ideas on future videos. Let us help.